like to invite you all to please open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 15. We will close the chapter. Noong isang linggo ay ating tinalakay yung paksang then sang Moses. At dahil sa uh, katagumpayan na nakita nila sa ginawang himala ng Panginoon na sila ay pinalakad sa uh, Red Sea na kung saan ito ay hinati ng Panginoon ang tubig ng dagat at sila ay nakatawid at uh, sa buong uh, uh, buong uh, mamamayang mga hudyo ay ang tagumpay nito ay nagdala ng uh, uh, labis na uh, kaligayahan at uh, uh, ito ay, of course, okay, uh, short-lived. So, that is what life on earth is. One day you're in the valley, and uh, the next day you may be on top of uh, the mountain. And uh, it's just like a cycle or a yo-yo. But ultimately, the end is none other than up because... The Lord is going to uh, come for us and take us to our celestial city whose maker and builder is God. So Exodus chapter 15, I would like us to read the remaining verses from verse 22 to verse 27. <clears throat> uh, I announced the title already this morning, but I would like to borrow the actual words of the scriptures a title of uh, the message ang uh, sabi dito sa verse uh, 25 okay and he cried unto the Lord which the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters the waters were made sweet okay so yan ang uh, ating uh, tatalakay ngayon ang bitter waters of Mara na yan ay masusumpungan dito sa verse 23 and verse 25. Okay, uh, shall we all please open our Bibles to this reference and let us read, okay, responsibly. Is one you follow uh, the leader, okay? Uh, brother, sir ba narito sa Arab? Brother Abed naman and brother uh, Miko, okay? Uh, please lead in the public reading of God's word. Exodus chapter 15 verse 23 uh, 22 up to verse 27 At pagkatapos niyan, bahala na kayo Kayo na mag-explain <laughs> Okay, go ahead and you follow please, okay? Exodus chapter 15 verse 22 So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea And they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Verse 23, And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. Verse 24, And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? 25, And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Verse 26, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. 27. And they came to Elim, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Mm. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Father, bless your word. I do pray, Father, that your spirit in us would open our hearts and our minds that we would see the things you would have us discover in relation to our uh, earthly pilgrimage. And bless now uh, with uh, thy still small voice and may we all be attentive uh, to uh, what you would have us uh, uh, discover and know as truths for life. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> 
the bitter waters of Mara in verse 23. Nung uh, isang linggong hapon sa chapter 15 because we are uh, on uh, uh, the book of Exodus uh, na kung saan sinimula ng Panginoon ang deliverance sa bayang ito how the nation was uh, delivered from the Egyptian bondage at ngayon sila ay uh, they are on a pilgrimage uh, they are travelers bound for a promised land ay uh, ating mapapansin when the Lord uh, overruled yung difficulty by the way uh, kanina pala sana maintindihan ng siyam at least okay na kayo yung passengers na dapat ay sa sa Royal Air kasi yun pala ay may corona raw yung Royal Air Royal kasi so kaya isinif kayo <laughs> ito talaga si Ator B. Alan <laughs> maraming nakikita rin okay? may punchline rin palagi so anyway uh, nung sila ay na, uh, nakatawid na sa impossibility na they were delivered from the Egyptian bondage yan ang unang discovery nila uh, kung gaano ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon kumilos at ganun rin kung ito ay personalize natin ang buhay natin ito nang tayo ay ipinanganak na maguli nung tayo ay maligtas ay tayo ay we were delivered from the bondage of sin na tayo ay alipin ng kasalanan uh, which is uh, what uh, Egypt portrays o inilalarawan o type ng Egypt. Ngayon, nung sila ay nakatawid doon, okay, the first uh, uh, stopover nila ay doon sa kabila ay sila ay sa katuwaan nila ay ating mapapansin sa pangunan ni Moses ay sabi sa chapter 15 verse 1, then sang Moses and the people joined in sa chorus na sila'y nagpupuri at uh, nagpapasalamat uh, sa Panginoon sa uh, uh, pagligtas sa kanila sa tiyak na uh, uh, banta sa kanila ng army uh, ni Pharaoh at sila'y babalik uli at aalipostahin at aalipinin uli sa Egypt. Now liberated people na sila. Uh, the estimate, the rough estimate ng mga mamamayang uh, nakatawid dito ay almost it runs between 1 million to 2 million na katao ang nakatawid. So, yung katuwaan nila, of course, they know na may lugar na ipinangako ang Panginoon sa kanila. So, nung sila na ay nakatawid, ang sabi sa uh, binasang uh, talata sa ating harapan sa verse 22 so Moses broth sa simula Moses sang and ngayon Moses broth the people na ngayon ay three days later after the celebration ay ating maririnig dito ang complaints from celebration to complaints na ang dahilan ay nung sila'y pinamunahan at dinala ni Moses sa lugar ng uh, wilderness. That's the second stage of the journey. Wilderness ay, ito ay yung stage uh, na middle na alanganin tulad yan sa uh, mga teenagers. Yun ang pinakamahirap. Alanganing bata at alanganing adult nasa middle uh, 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 stage or level. So, uh, kasi nagkakaroon ng parang identity uh, crisis <laughs> sa uh, mid-age uh, na ito. So anyway, ito ang larawan ng uh, bagong ligtas na anak ng Diyos in the level of immaturity. Hindi pa matured. Kung ang travel ng Israel ay kukumpare natin sa three levels, yung deliverance from Egypt and the Red Sea ay salvation. That is infancy. They were infants in their uh, faith in God. Dito sa second level or stage ay ito ang youth o kaya ito ang wilderness, immaturity at uh, wala pang gaanong alam. And then as they 
progress in their journey, ang pangako ng Panginoon, doon sila sa promised land. Ang Canaan is a picture of maturity. So, ito'y nilarawan rin as uh, the victorious Christian life when we uh, reach that uh, stage in life. So, I hope nakikita ninyo na sa uh, travel ng Israel ay ang journey of life ng isang Kristiyano ay isinusulat ng Panginoon ang takbo ng ating buhay. Kaya nga, Christians, okay, uh, ay dapat maalaman ng bawat isa sa atin na we are strangers in this world and we are citizens of heaven. Kaya kung wala kayong dual citizenship, ay wala kayong tiyak na paruroonan. Kinakailangan you must be born again. Sabi ni, uh, ni, uh, uh, ni Apostle uh, Paul and Apostle Peter also men uh, mentioned this, that we are strangers uh, and pilgrims uh, in this world. We are headed and bound for the promised land. So ngayon, ang bayan ay mula doon sa pagkatubos sa shore ng uh, uh, Red Sea na pinagmamas na nila kung saan inilunod ng Panginoon ang army ni Pharaoh at tuwang-tuwa sila sa galak ay mula doon it was not the final destiny it was merely a stopover they have to go from shore to shore tingnan nyo please sa verse uh, 22 so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea from the shores of the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. Yun ang wilderness doon sa Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness. So, from the shore of, uh, uh, shores of uh, Red Sea, bound for the wilderness, itong particular na lugar na ito na Shur, ay ito ay three days travel. And we know na three days, especially wala pa sila ng modern means of transportation, I, it's quite uh, a lot uh, uh, to travel under the hot sea of the Middle East. So, natural ito, sa paglalakbay nila, ay they have to have water. At from Egypt, they prepared everything, but doon sa kanilang crossing at panatili nila doon, sa dahil sa init at pagkatapos nagpatuloy sila sa paglalakbay, ay na-exhaust yung kanilang rasyong tubig na daladala nila. And no doubt nung nakikita nila na nangihina na ang kanilang mga anak at nangamamatay na ang kanilang uh, mga alagang hayupan ay is really something that uh, needs to be addressed. So, ating mapapansin dito that uh, as Moses okay, uh, brought Israel from the Red Sea at doon ay mayroong isang pangyayari na dapat makita natin na hindi natin ito may iwasan sa buhay nito. And perhaps before, during, and after na kayo ay maligtas, ay there is no guarantee na hindi na kayo makakaharap o makakaranas ng bitter waters of Mara. It's part of this life. Ang wala na lang yan ay sa langit. Dito nga, literally, nagsasuffer tayo na kung saan mayroon naman tayong mga tubig. Kaya nga lang, may oras ng uh, ang, uh, mga uh, uh, gripo natin ay nawawala ng tubig. Okay? Whether uh, uh, whether it is okay, uh, controlled or this uh, power play para uh, may makakontrol, etc. Only God knows. Now there are three things here that you better okay, uh, take your Christian life seriously. Because, because sooner or later you will go to this experience and encounter of the bitter waters of Mara. Three things that I would like to share with you 
about the bitter waters of Mara. So verse 23, ang title dito, The Bitter Waters of Mara. From time to time, dadaan tayo dyan. Okay? First of all, I would like us to notice the problem. Okay? Alamin natin ang problema. Bakit nagkaganito? Okay? I thought ang Christian life is a bed of roses. Yes! However, wala namang roses na walang thorns. Diba? So, ating mapapansin dito, first of all, <clears throat> the problems they, that was encountered. The problems encountered. Oh, short na lang. That is in verse 22 to verse <clears throat> uh, 23. And I will e expound on what the problems uh, are at pagkatapos ito ay ano ang tamang address o solution. Because kung magkamali tayo sa uh, proper address dito sa problema ng ito, it will not uh, in any way solve the problems. It may even compound the problems which we do not want to happen. Okay, so second, okay, the prayer, okay, expressed. Yung prayer na inexpress ni Moses dito. Wow! What a great man Moses truly is. He knew what to do. And he never ran away from the problems. Kasi isipin nyo, ang daming tao at sa iyo lahat ibinabato ang sisi. And Moses knew exactly what to do. He took the problems to God. Third, notice with me, that's in verse 25. Tingnan nyo please ang salitang, And he cried unto the Lord. That is the prayer that he addressed to the Lord. Nilalaman niya. And then, <clears throat> verse 26 <clears throat> to verse 27, we can find here the uh, provision expressed. Yung provision na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa kanila. You will be amazed that after going to the bitter waters of Mara, you will be far better rather than remain bitter. Which would you like? Bitter or better? Okay. <laughs> Yan ang nangyari dito. <clears throat> First of all, the problem encountered. After three days, exhausted sila at pagkatapos thirsty. Let's not deny it that while in this life, ay kailangan natin ang tubig. At hindi masama na tayo ay mauhaw. Because that is how uh, God created us. It's our, in our <clears throat> human anatomy na ang ating dugo mismo is made up 60% of water. So, kailangan natin. <clears throat> At maraming nagkakasakit na sila ay tinuturukan ng dextrose na ito ay as, uh, 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 as a substitute uh, to natural water <coughs> na kailangan nila. Okay, so, ano ngayon? <coughs> Hindi yun yung water. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Okay, remember, they were traveling. Natural ito, mainit yung araw. At sabi ng DOH, dahil sa coronavirus, ay huwag niyong uh, tigilan na kayo ay from time to time na nararanasan ninyo na kayo ay nadadry na ang inyong mga lalamunan ay uminom kayo ng tubig. Isa ito sa mga prevention raw. Okay? So, but it's no guaranteed na cure yun. At, at least prevention, uh, prevention yun. Maliban sa regular na intake natin ng dapat 8 hours of glasses of water, ay from time to time na nadry kayo, kuminam kayo tulad nito na nadry ako. <clears throat> So, 
yung search nila is normal. Yung kayo ay nakuuhaw, ay normal yun eh. And this uh, search, itong para na ito nang sila yung mauhaw, ay whether they, uh, you know it or not, they believe it or not then, ay the truth of the matter is kung bakit dinila sila ng Panginoon sa lugar na ito that though there was much waters in that place, yet hindi drinkable, hindi pwedeng inumin ang tubig na ito. Tulad ng katagang water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. So, anya na sa kag, uh, kalagitan ka ng laot at uhawin uh, uhaw ka, you cannot endure uh, drinking salt water. It will not relieve you of any thirst. Neither will it relieve you kung ang gamitin ninyo dito to quench your thirst ay gamitin ninyo dito ay soft drinks or any uh, drinks at all which only water can address. So thirst is normal. But although it was uh, the experience of uh, the people at <clears throat> nung naroon na sila at alam nila na ito na ang kasagutan na nakita nila na maraming tubig sa lugar na ito ng Mahara ay biglang nagbago ang kanilang mga anyo. Nagbigla ang kanilang mga uh, pananalita na kung saan kikaysa papuri ay ngayon ay puro angal. Kaya nga ang lugar ng Mara ay ito'y tinawag ng Mara na galing sa adjective ng Hebrew word Mar. Ibig sabihin ng Mar ay murmuring. Ibig sabihin ng Mar ay ito ay complaining. Kaya dapat tayo maging mga Boy Scout o Girl Scout and then as we mature ay maging good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Na tulad ng sinabi dyan na kapos sa Camp Krami. Out, uh, outnumbered but ano yan ang nakalagay doon? Never outfought. Okay? So, ating uh, makikita dito nung sila ay nakarating na sa lugar na ito, pagod na pagod na three days na naglalakad at pagkatapos na apektuhan na sila bag bagamat sumasapat pa yung uh, taglay nilang pagkain mula sa Egypt but papunta doon three days sapagkat inom sila ng inom pati mga hayupan nila ay nawala na sila ng tubig at nung nakita nila sa lugar na ito three days na naroon sila eto naman hindi naman potable water hindi naman pala inuming tubig ito ito ay mapait ang kalagayan ng water na ito ay ang tinatawag na warm wood walang tatalo sa pinakamatinding kapaitan sa kapaitan ng isang kahoy na tinatawag na warm wood ang warm wood ay isa sa uh, tatlong series of uh, plagues na ipadadala ng Panginoon sa sanglibutan ito ahead of us in the future sa tribulation period na ang warm wood na ito ay isa sa mga description ng jablo At pagkatapos na siya ay nalaglag mula sa langit, ay dito sa mga tubig, whether, whatever forms of water on earth, ay it will become warm wood. Na ang mga tao na iinom ng tubig na ito sa third trumpet judgment, ay mula sa faucet nila, at anumang source ng tubig spring o well o river o dagat ay they will be poisoned poisonous that the moment they drink of it mangingisay sila at immediately mamamatay sila so alam nila when they first tasted this wa uh, uh, water it was so bitter napaka bitter alam nyo yung bitterness hindi lang naman totoo ito sa tubig na naranasan nila right there and then lumabas kung ano ang bitterness na meron sila sa labas 
At yung bitterness nila, hindi na ing nila, isinisi nila kay Moses, hindi nila mo lang pala kami dito para kami ipatayin. Mabuti pa sa Egypt, kahit pa paano nakakakain kami ng maayos at nakakainom kami ng maayos. Pero dito, hindi nila mo lang kami pala dito para kami ay patayin. So, bitter. Ang taong isinilang sa ibabo ng sanglibutan ay nakakaranas siya, krisyano hindi, ng bitterness kapaitan. Okay? Wala, di ba? Wala namang bata na isinilang na hindi umiiyak. Wala pang kamalay-malay yung bata. As the child grows up, ay nakakaranas siya na, na ang uh, emotion niya na affectuhan. Minsan dumarating sa lugar, <coughs> Nobody loves me, nobody cares for me. Emotional bitterness. At nariyan ang umibig and then lost, jilted, frustrated in love life. Wow, ang bitter. So, at nariyan ang ganda ng buhay mo and then magandang performance mo, etc. And suddenly, a slump takes place in your company at nagkaroon ng retrenchment at isa ka sa mga tanggal sa trabaho. You, wow, this challenge caused many to grieve and to manifest that spirit. Naging bitter sila. Maganda naman yung uh, uh, performance ko. Ginawa ko na para sa lahat ang uh, uh, kapakanan ng uh, aking opisina, etc. Then suddenly, kasama ka sa natanggal. So, Masakit yun eh. And resentment. At many others na kung saan ay you, uh, you lose your money. You lose especially your health. Matindi ito. Bakit ang kaganito ako? Why? We always ask the question, why in the world na ako pa? Bakit hindi sila? Ako ay anak ng Diyos. Bakit ako ay nagkaganito pa? Okay? We always ask, why am I suffering? And then, it's manifested in that bitterness. And we cultivate this bitterness. Matindi ito eh. Now, tell me, what is it in your heart that makes you bitter? Talagang mapait at saka, you easily turn off, you are easily angry. Hindi ka maintindihan. Bitter. Alam niyo kung kay kinaruro ng Holy Spirit, you need not succumb to bitterness. You take this. As a matter of fact, kung nakikita niyo na ang mga karanasang ito mabuti at masama, whatever losses or etc. you are going through, that you will count it as a blessing kung makita mo lamang ang katotohanan na you have someone in you na that grieves along with you. Besides, there is no temptation that is uh, taken you, which is not common to man, but the Lord is faithful who will not suffer you na kayo'y pabayaan, but will always make a way of escape. So dito ay ating mapapansin <clears throat> that the Lord guaranteed that this experience of life, okay, yung mga problems, yung trials, yung troubles, yung losses natin, na instead na tayo ay ma-downcast, why art, why art thou downcast, O my soul? Sabi ng uh, 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 psalmist. And then we are discouraged. We are depressed. That's what life is in this world without God and without Christ. But it need not take over us. Why? Because God has given us someone na ito ang answer doon. And this is the Holy Spirit. If you are a child of God, the Holy Spirit resides. Nananahan siya sa inyong mga puso at buhay. And believe it or not, ang Holy Spirit sa lahat ng mga hayupan at mga hayop, ang ginamit na paglalarawan sa kanya, he is a dub. A dub. Kalapati. Sapagkat sa lahat 
na mga fowls ay ang kalapati lamang at mga hayop na nilikha ng Diyos. Ang kalapati lamang ang no guile at dahil siya ay walang gall. Ang gall na bahagi ng katawan natin ay ito ay ginagamit sa siyensya ng mga uh, medical authorities para alamin ang lunas o ang gamot dito. Minsan, yung kapaitan ng gold na yan ay it becomes bitter sweet as a pill because yung remedy, yung cure ay natuklasan nila and then uh, it will be addressed with a discovery in medicine. Atorni, ano sa Tagalog ang gold? Di ba, abdo, pinakamapait, mapait, pero wala niyan ang Holy Spirit. Kaya it's time na kayo ay may bitterness, tandaan nyo, it's not of the Spirit. Parang sinasabi ni Apostle Paul sa Philippians chapter 4 verse 2, Now we are to quit or stop complaining. But let's face it, we are a bunch of complainers, murmurers. We murmur. This is what the meaning of mara is. Bar, meaning murmuring. It's an indication of immaturity or childishness. When are we going to grow up spiritually? Yun ang dapat na tanungin natin. At ito mga nararanasan nila, iba-ibang uring bitterness na naranasan rin natin dito. Maybe in the home, you have bitterness. It will not do you any good. As a matter of fact, it will, uh, it may get you down to the bed na kayo ay pabagsakin at uh, magkaroon ng sakit. So it's not good to uh, espouse and to embrace bitterness in our lives. It ought not to be there. It ought to be, tulad ng ginawa ni Moses, to be addressed to God. Because the truth of the matter, kung bakit sila nakarating doon, and you know, Moses was merely leading them as he followed the pillar of cloud uh, by day and the pillar of fire by night. So it was God that led them directly to this place. But God has his reason in the world why he allowed this in the life of the nation of Israel and why he allows bitterness in our lives because God wants to prove our hearts whether we really have confidence or we trust him. Tingnan nyo please dito ang salita dito ang proof. Sa verse 26, yan ang mga mara sa buhay natin ay is God's way of testing us. And there are three ample reasons why God tests us. Why He tests our faith. Sabi dito sa verse 25, tingnan nyo, ligtas na ba yan na sila? Ligtas ka na, but you will go through tests. And this Mara will be exposed. Sabi dito sa verse 25, And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made, bit, uh, uh, made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he tested, he proved them. Why did God prove Israel? Why does God prove us? Iniligtas niya naman tayo. Siya naman ang source ng ating pananampalataya. But why in the world is God testing us? Okay? Habang nga rito tayo sa ibabaw ng sanglibutan, life is a series of tests. It will be a lifetime and a lifelong test. Some are big and some are not that big. But However, it's still God's way of testing us. Testing your faith. Why does God test our faith? Number one, God tests our faith to prove the genuineness of it. Para mapatunayan ang katotohanan kung ito nga ay totoo na ikaw ay ligtas na. So pagkat the moment that test comes, uh, you will bid the Christian of faith, the Christian brethren die. And the Apostle John said, they went out from us because they were not of us. And this is God's way of testing us to prove 
the genuineness of our faith. So, pagkatito, there are times that when we come to this mad experience, I will lack trust or confidence in God. Do tayo ay magaligtas na. And doon tayo nagmumupok sa katanungan, why? Bakit nagyari ito sa atin? So, there is always a purpose why things happen the way they do. Whether God's will or God's permissive will. Second, the second reason why the Lord tested Israel and will have to test you, not only to prove the genuineness of their faith, but number two, to purge us from our filthiness, from our filth, na tayo ay linisin ng Panginoon sa ating mga lubos na overconfidence at pagtitiwala sa sarili. When you have lost everything, you will discover and realize that the only thing that counts and matters in this life is God. Shalang, you will never lose God. You may lose anything. You may lose your loved ones. They may die, but never so with God. You may lose your money. As a matter of fact, the truth of matter is, nung ako may binibili, hindi ko na pagkamali yung suksuk ko ng pera, pagkakwa ko ng pera, yung 1,500, buong 1,500. Kala ko na isilid ko, siguro naglaglag. Nung naglaglag ito, medyo naligalik ako. Pero suddenly, it flashed into my mind. Sabi ko, my loss is someone's gain. Baka mas kailangan niya ito. What a comfort. Sabi ko, hindi ako nabahala. Okay. <laughs> God is uh, uh, proving us how, I, how we will react to the problems is what matters. And then you learn when everything is seemingly lost, God will be the only one that will matter most in your life. That's why the Lord has to test us to remove this unbelief. Yung ating hindi lubos na pagtitiwala sa Panginoon. And then third, the Lord proved Israel. Okay? That's a purging. So that yung faith nila ay mamunga. Di ba binigay ng Panginoon yung, uh, so John chapter 15, yung uh, uh, the vine, the vineyard and uh, the vine. Yung, uh, Ano ito? Ubas? Yung ubas? Mga hindi na mumunga. At konting pamumunga, na mumunga ay ang ginawa ng Panginoon. Sabi niya, I'm not entirely satisfied. I will do something para mamunga ka ng gusto. So, the Lord purges, cuts off yung mga sanga, yung mga kumukuha lang ng mga minerals na nasasap mula sa ground. Wala ka namang saysay dito, hindi ka naman namumunga. So, barren ka. So, pinapurch ng Panginoon so that it might bring forth fruit. More fruit and much fruit. That's just the way life is. Your faith sooner or later will be tested. At minsan, hindi ko kaya itong pagsubok na ito. Hindi mo kaya. Let's face it. But meron bang hindi kaya ang Panginoon? And this is what Moses discovered. That the only way is up. Lumingin, lumingin tayo sa Panginoon. So, ginawa niya dito, siya nang sinisisi. Siya na, ang sama ng mga loob nila. Nagbibitib na sila ng mga iba-ibang pananalita. Laban kay Moses, and no doubt, na si Moses ay naafektuhan dito. Sabi niya, in, at least si Moses hindi kayo at ako siguro kung tayo nasa lugar ni Moses sabi niya mabuti pa hindi ako kinawag ng Panginoon para maglid sa ganitong um, mga taong ito puro pala tigas ng ulo ah. at uh, maybe we would give up but not so with Moses he knew what to do he addressed his prayers to the Lord. So verse 25. And he cried unto the Lord. 
and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters ma were made sweet. Anong pagsubok meron tayo? Sabi ko sa inyo, minsan, kasi nga yung mataos, uh, ang, uh, ang uh, uh, mindset ng mga tao ngayon, nadadala tayo ng ibang mga groups ng mindset is we have to have good success. But there can be no good success apart from God. Because good success is a reward from God. It may not be from someone else. It's God-given. So, some people are so concerned about their health. Kaya ang daming produkto ngayon, lumalabas, iba-iba. No therapeutic value, and yet mabili sila. Eh, tayo naman, bumibili nila. Kung alam ko nag-alok ay mga kapwa Krisyano, alam na natin na ngayon, bibili na lang tayo para ma, uh, uh, ma kumita man lang kahit pa paano eh. Okay, matulungan. So dito yung ating mapansin kung hindi man well health. Di ba ganyan eh? Kaya maraming sumasama sa kanila. Dito sa group namin ay you will have wealth and health. Pagkatapos pag nagkakasakit sila, huwag kang magsalita, huwag kang maingay. Dito lang ako sa bahay muna, pahinga muna. Yan ba ang health na tinutukoy nila? Okay, so even salvation does not exempt us from getting sick. Don't you ever fall for their teaching. You will always be healthy when you have faith in God. And dami sa Bible, may sakit eh. Namatay pa sa sakit. Diba? So, uh, you have uh, to look uh, to the Bible and look to God rather than to listen uh, to these mega churches, preachers na health and wealth ang kailangan natin dito. Kasi kung may pera ka, ay lahat ng gusto mo makakita is actually breeding the materialistic uh, spirit na puro material. And we are a tripartite being and each of this can only be satisfied when we address the Lord our problems. At ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Moses, simple and direct. Sabi niya, Moses, okay, I have proven and the people have failed, but just the same, I do care for these people. I redeem the nation. Sabi niya, kita mo ba ang puno yun? Ano, Lord, yes. Putulin mo yung kahoy na yun at ihangis mo dyan sa Mara. At nung sinunod ng Moses ang utos ng Panginoon, pinutol niya ang kahoy na ito at itinapon niya doon yung kahoy sa tubig. Alam niyo, nagkaroon sila ng maring inuming tubig because the poison of the water, the bitterness of the water was absorbed by this purifier. The first purifier in the Bible. Yung punong ito. Siguro it was a wormwood, a tree of wormwood. Yung hinagis doon. Yung kahoy na ito, yung punong ito na hinagis. And every time we come across a tree, we must always think about what it symbolizes. Doon sa harde ng Eden ay mapapakinabangan nila but there were two forbidden trees na hindi nila dapat kainin ito. Ano kaya yun? Tat dalawa lang na roon. Una, yun lang ang alam natin kasi kasama tayo doon. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Lahat ng tao ay nahawa at nasalinan ng makasalanang uh, gawain o nature, kalikas, likas ni Adan at saka ni Eva. Kaya they have to be thrown out of the Garden of Eden to prevent them from eating of the other tree. Ano yung thing yun? The tree of life. Sabagkat kung sila'y makakain ng bunga ng tree of life, forever silang mananatiling fallen creature. There would be no remedy. So they have to be driven out of the garden. Nakita nyo, dalawang puno. But yung tree dito, yung, hindi dapat yung puno ang ating tutukan. Kundi ano ba ang ibig sabihin 
ng akto ng puno at ng akto ng pinagawa ng Panginoon kay Moses. This is the solution. This is the cure for the ill of the waters of Mara and the ills of the bitterness and the problems of mankind. And this tree, my friend, is a symbol of the cross of Jesus Christ. Nang sabi, ating mapapansin ito sa New Testament mismo sa sulat ni Apostle Peter. I like this verses. Basahin natin para makita natin ang kahalagahan ng punong ito uh, sa ating mga buhay. Sa so 1 Peter chapter 2. Tingnan niyo please, basahin natin ang several verses para makita natin. Wow! What a blessed promise sa inyo at sa akin. Okay, tingnan nyo. Ito ang halimbawa na dapat nating sundan sapagkat ang buhay niya simulat sa Paul ng say hanggang umantong sa cross ay puno at walang patid na pagsubok hanggang kamatayan. Tingnan nyo please, sa verse 21 at hanggang uh, dito sa verse 24. For even here unto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his steps who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously verse 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Saan ba pinasan ng Panginoon at tumantong sa puno ang kasalanan natin ito? Was it not the cross? The cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus is and will always be the answer to mankind's problems. Amen. Dito ay dapat natin tanda nito. He had been good to us. And sabi ng Panginoon, okay Moses, nakita mo na that I have all the power in the world and this multitude of complainers and murmurers were able to drink themselves sufficiently. Sabi niya, okay, ngayon I, your thirst were quenched by Sprite. Now, move on. Di ba Sprite nag-advertise yun ng nakakakwens ng ating thirst. Pero uminom ka. Hahanap ka ng tubig. So sabi niya, Moses, move on! Nakainom na kayo. Nag-resupply na yung uh, 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 needs ninyo for uh, water. I continue to move on. Pero tandaan niyo, I require these things para continuous ang blessings sa life ninyo. Tingnan niyo please sa so verse uh, 26. I will bless you higit pa sa hinihingi o hinihiling ninyo. I will bless you more than what you deserve and what you ask for. Verse 26. And God said, if this is a conditional word, ito ay tuloy-tuloy. Okay, makakatawid ka dyan sa lahat ng mga maras sa buhay ninyo. Lahat ng mga malas sa buhay ninyo. Kung meron man, makakatawid ka dyan. Sabi dito sa verse 26, And God said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Doon na, pagpakinggan nyo ang tinig ng Panginoon. Second, and will do that which is right in his sight. Nang gagawin ninyo sa harap ng Diyos ay yung tamang ipinag-uutos niya sa inyo. Third, and will give ear to his commandments. At kayo ay seryosong makikinig sa kanyang mga ipinag-uutos sa inyo. And keep all his statutes. At susundin niyo lahat hindi parts kundi lahat ng kanyang ipinag-utos sa inyo. Then, sabi ng Panginoon, ito, yung if conditional ito, that's our human part and human responsibility. But here is God's sovereignty, God's promise. Sabi ng Panginoon, 
I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Ayan ang claim ng mga faith healers. Hindi na kayo magkakasakit. Salvation does not exempt us from getting sick. And there are many ways that God heals us and cures us from sicknesses. Una, in our own bodies, I, we have our own doctors that sends the signals and uh, uh, ang ating katawan mismo ay uh, may self-healing na kung saan ay it addresses the problem. Second, nariyan yung mga doctors at mga gamot. Si Apostle Paul ay meron rin siyang kapansanan and he needed a doctor to accompany him. And doc doctors in those days are quite expensive as it is today. Di ba? Kaya kung maaari dito na sa bahay, mahal sa kan patasurisitan, katakot-takot. So, ating mapapansin, kung hindi pa rin nakuha yung tanda nyo, divine healing will always do and will always work. Yung hindi na kaya nga ng mga doktors, ay walang hindi kaya ang Panginoon. Sabi ng Panginoon, remember, I am the great physician. Yung nagsinasabi niya dito, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Kung nagkasakit ka man, ay ako ang magbibigay ng kagalingan sa inyo. But you have to trust the Lord. Yung sabi dito, I will put none of these diseases. Hindi garanti ito na hindi tayo magkakasakit. Pag tayo sumuway uh, sa, uh, sa uh, physical hygiene, we break that uh, uh, law, the principle, I, we get sick. Diba? So, kung nagkakasakit tayo, ay hawak ng Panginoon ang lunas. Ang tinutukoy dito na hindi ko kayo padadala ng sakit tulad ng mga sakit na ipinadala ko sa Egypt. Yung mga salot yun. So, dito ay ano mga salot yun? There were ten plagues that the Lord sent. Okay? It will not affect you, your business, your uh, uh, body, and whatever. Diba? They were under the protection of the shed blood as a nation, ang Israel. Pero sa atin, okay, of course, nagkakasakit tayo. At kung nagkakasakit tayo, ay ang mga doktor na pinupuntahan natin, doctors can only promise you this. Doctors, I like uh, the late doctor uh, Damasiano Ago who built uh, the, ho the hospital named after him, Agro uh, Memorial Hospital, and who built the Eden Hotel uh, in Ligaspe. He's a Protestant. Doon sa logo nila sa hospital, at least he was an honest doctor. Ang logo niya ay, we doctors, etong logo, we treat. Ginagamot namin sa susunod sa moto niya. Isa yung uh, line. The second line, we treat. Pangalawa, God heals. You see? Ang, I like that. Kaya nga lang, nakarana siya, the late doctor. Uh, na, lagi kaibigan ko yung doktor ang anak niya. The late doctor, I sort of he fell for, you know, tulad ng si Dr. Bonifacio dito, may malaking hospital dyan, sa Frisco, dalawang blocks yan, ay pumasok sa politika. He ran for Congress tulad ni Dr. Bonifacio. So nawala, nawala, maraming nawala. He suffered losses. He experiences mara. Why? Because hindi niya ito forte. Leave politics to the politicians. Continue with your profession, your medical practice. Ah, ganon. Ating mapapansin, God has given each one of us gifts and talents. And God would have you exercise that. And God would not have you to depart from that and change whatever 
para maiwasan ninyo ang mara sa buhay nyo. Every day na kami dumadaan dyan sa tandang Sora and some of you have sent your children sa prestigious school ni ito, exclusive school, expensive school, St. James. Well, the, the structure, the big structure does not exist anymore. Why? Because the late founder of that, I, he entered politics, si James Santiago, I natalo siya. And thereafter, natural. When you enter politics, you will have to spend so much. Pero mababawi naman karakaraka ito. But it did not happen. You will have power and you will have money. Kung nakapasok ka sa Congress, pork barrel mo. 200, noon, 200 million, dinagdagan ngayon. Bawat congressman yan, kaya everybody would like to be a congressman and a senator because of the pork barrel. So, akala ko nga, seryoso ang ating Pangulo na no more pork barrel. But it's still there, kaya nga, no matter how, how much rigid sila sa pagtitest nila sa mga pinapasang base for the, the budget for the fiscal year ay may mga additional na nilalagay. Kanya-kanyang lagay. At kawawang Juan de la Cruz. Okay. Politics is... Don't use it as an example. Eh si, si Daniel naman ay nasa politics. He became a president at uh, assistant na hari. Hindi eh, ka naman si, uh, si Daniel eh. Si Joseph became the governor of entire Egypt. But hindi sila nagkandidato. They never aspired for the office. It was a providential work of God na sila ilagay doon to address the needs of his own people. Okay, not because of the pork barrel. Okay? So dito yung ating mapapansin mga kaibigan that God will test you whether you like it or not. At habang nabubuhay kayo, the test will be there. Kaya nga dapat ay you must always consult the Lord and know His will. Lord, is this your will? Otherwise, your mara, that bitterness will characterize your life. Exercise your faith in God and let God help you. He is the best that can guide you. So dito yung ating mapapansin, sabi ng Panginoon, yung mga salot na binigay ko sa Egyptians to wake them up that Pharaoh has no contest with me. Hindi siya mananalo sa akin. And this was God's way of delivering uh, you. So ngayon, sabi ng Panginoon dito, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yung salitang healeth or heal ay sa Hebro, Rapha. R-A-P-H-A, Rapha. At since ito ay ginamit sa isa sa mga pangalan ng Diyos, ay Yahweh Rufeke Jehovah okay, Rufeka so ating mapapansin the Lord that healeth thee kung bakit kaya inariyan pa either may nararamdaman o malusog o walang nararamdaman is because God watch over your life and your health but the moment na i-withdraw lang ng Panginoon sa buhay mo ang kanyang watch care at ang kanyang protection sa iyo, you will fall. It's only the Lord who healeth thee. He's the great physician. And open doors siya sa atin. And no matter what the test, serious or severe test ng mga buhay natin, Take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't rush ahead of God's will. Be very sure that it's God's will. Bibigay ko yun ang first account of experience. Kaya nga lang, uh, there's no sense crying over spilled milk, so to speak. No remorse. <coughs> 
when I was tried na, pag tuwing umuwi ako sa gabi, pagdaan ko dyan sa Mindanao Avenue, malaki yung mga streamer, mga nails lighted na mga advertisement, napapansin ko, yung right eye ko, ay minsan, nagsusubside yung color. Sabi ko mo, may problema na ako sa mata, yung right lang naman. Nag-iisip na ako nito hanggang pumunta ako. The first shock of my life is said na sa Panginoon ay medyo nabagabag ako eh. Pumunta ako dyan, patingin sa doktor. Tinignan niya, may katarata ka. Okay. So kailangan operahan natin. Isa lang na uh, nagwawala-wala yung kulay. Dalawang mata operahan. At ang bawat mata, maghanda uh, ka ng 125,000 sa mata. Mula noon, nahirapan ako matublog, kaisip ako. Mabubulag kayo ako nito. E then pumunta ko sa another doctor. Hindi naman gabi yung charge. E <coughs> sabi ng doktor, <coughs> pasuri ka nga dito sa St. Luke's. Modern equipment, sila tinitingnan. Okay, nang matapos ito after several days, siyempre pag nag-iisip ka yung concentrated ka talagang it will affect your sleep. Pinasa na sa uh, doktor na kinonsultahan ko doon, ay doktor, ay sabi niya, hindi ko ito linya. Okay, sa katarata hindi ko linya ito, ang meron ka ay glaucoma. So, dito ka, nirefer niya rin ako sa doktor. Ang dami ng doktor na humandil. Eh, like, surgeon. Sabi niya, ah, dito sa result, kailangan mo ay surgery. At implant ko sa iyo. Doon ako nagkamali. Implant ko sa mata mo ang isang tube na magre-release ng eye pressure mo para hindi sumabog yan. Totally mabulag ka. Okay, ano nang, nang, simula na ako, sabi ko, nag-pray na ako. Mamaya-maya, pagpunta ko doon, kasi oh, physical, sabi ko, kung hindi naman kinakailangan madaliin, sabi ko, from time to time, pumupunta ako doon at sinicheck up niya. Tumataas yung grade ng mata ko, sabi niya. Oh, kailangan talaga kasi. Tapos yung katabi ko, na pasyente, ay palagi nag-aaway sa misis niya, matindi yung mara niya misis niya sabi niya inaaway niya ng gusto yung kanyang misis sabi niya bibili ka rin lang ng TV black and white pa binili mo sabi ng misis niya e color dyan ayun pala matindi na severe na yung glaucoma wala nang kulay all black na yun next na yun sa mabulag ka eh so naku nang sirabi ko mukha yatang patindi talaga delikado pala ang glaucoma o oh, sabi ko dok Siguro sa ganitong araw pa kwan ako sa iyo. Pero para may pumipigil sa akin. E nakapagsabi na ako sa kanya, Dok, dapat yata paopera na ako. Pag uwi ko, nag-isip-isip ako, ba bakit ka agad ako kwan dito? Sinabi lang naman ng doktor. Sinadjust ng doktor. Sabi ko, nagbitiw na ako ng salita. Nakakahiya naman. Baka isipin niya, takot ako. Eh. Tinutuhanan ko. Ito naging resulta. Binutas yung mata ko at nilagyan ng tubo. Pagkatapos nilagyan ng tubo, naapektuhan yung katarata. So, uh, sabi ko, lalo lumabo. Ay, okay. dapat yan. Hindi, akala ko sapat na yun. Hindi makabasa ng maliliit na titik. Yung kaliwa na lang. Pero sabi niya, kailangan kasi pa niyan ay dapat i-laser yan. Oh, how soon, Doc? Para okay na. Sabi niya, magkantay ka muna ng uh, isang buwan o dalawang buhay, buwan para feel health na ang sumagot. Eh, sabi ko, Doc, ba't mag-auntay? Sabi ko, nagmamadali ako. Bakit antay pa natin yung feel health kung kailangan ngayon na? Eh, sige, ikaw-opera ka lang noon. Nagyabang na naman ako. Sabi ko, para patunayan na hindi ako duwag. Sabi ko, sige na, Doc. Go ahead. Binilang ko. Minalalan nyo. Tak, tak, palibot. Daming. If I, 90, 92 or 97, tinagtad. 
Okay, pas ilagay mo ito, pasta ko. Ilagay ko. The following, nagpunta ko, Dok. Mabuti pa, nung hindi, ni Leishem. Kahit pa paano, medyo maliwanag, nakakita. Mal, yung mga ma malalayat, malalaking titik na babasa ko. Nung ni Leishem mo ako, hindi ko na mabasa. Sinagot ko, sabi ko, kung hindi ako Kristiyano, may tama siya sa akin. Sinagot pa naman ako ng doktor, ay sabi niya, at least mabuti, may isa ka pang matang nakakita. <laughs> Grabing sisi ko. Humingi ako ng matinding patawad sa Panginoon. Lord, please forgive me for rushing into thanks. Hindi ako nagantay sa iyo, Panginoon. Nagmadali ako. Why? Because tulad ni Samson, ayaw ko maranasan na mabulag. Okay. Pero ito nga nangyari. At least, sabi niya, mayroon ka pa namang isang mata. A medic, may pupunta ka pa dito. Sabi ko, hindi na ako babalik. Hayaan ko na lang ang doktor doon sa taas. Sabi ko, don't rush ahead of God's timing and God's will. You have to wait on God because it is God that heals thee. Kaya yun ang, kung meron man akong kanta ngayon, regrets. <laughs> And I have regrets. Iyon lang naman. Iyon lang. Pero at least meron pa naman isang mata. Sabi ng doktor, sabi ko kung ako hindi ligtas, baka binugbog na kita dito. Ganun talaga. So learn to wait on God. Don't rush ahead of God. Don't let your fear take over your faith in God. That's the lesson I have learned. And the Lord knew how to teach me. And the Lord knew how to puncture that pride, that seeming courage, at alisin yung hangin. So, ang dami ko. Pero na, nasaktan muna ako eh. Hirap. Noon, kahit magdamaga nagbabasa, walang tulugan yan, nakakabasa ako. Ngayon, kung kailan ako babasa, saka ako inaantok. Oh, pero sabi ko, Lord, ikaw na bahala. I leave everything into your hands. Kung ano man mangyari, bahala ka na, Panginoon. Anyway, dito sa lupang ito, talagang puro pagso, pagdating doon sa langit, lahat tayo nasa 2020 na uli. 2020 na tayo ngayon. Doon ang perfect 2020. No more tears. No more sorrows. No more problems. No more bitterness. No more separation, no more death, no more darkness. Amen. And all because of God's marvelous grace. Amen. Shall we all stand up and sing that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You are what you are by the grace of God and keep on embracing God by faith. Amen. Brother Sunny. 86 now. It has been for too long that we sang this God exalting song that we are what we are by God's grace and God's grace alone. Sole gracia. Yeah. Uh -huh.
napakaganda ng pangako ng Panginoon dito. And one thing more that I do not want to escape in this lesson of going through the marrows of life. I saw chapter 15, the Lord blessed them far more than what they deserved, what they needed, and what they asked for. So verse 27, and they came to Elim, there were 12 wells of water and 70, okay, three score and ten, 70 palm trees. Doon ay masagana sa balon ng tubig that can supply uh, the, uh, the people. And then there are 70 palm trees. Palaging trees ang healing ng Panginoon. Yung palm trees, okay, which abounds in the Middle East and especially in Israel uh, in the time of Moses. Yung palm tree serves two purposes. Una, yung palm trees na sinabi nga sa Psalms, okay, chapter 1 verse 1, thou shalt be planted in uh, rivers, okay, and you will have shade, you will be shaded by God from the heat of whatever maras and problems you have this life. And then pangalawa, not only will the Lord relieve you of your, your thirst, but the Lord will also provide much more than what you need and deserve, the food. The palm trees is also a source of supply for fruits na nakakain nila. Sabi ng Panginoon, sa akin, you have the best restaurant ever. Can you beat that? As you travel this life, remember this. The Lord is thy healer. Our Father, we thank you tonight na alam ninyo ang aming mga katayuan, ang aming mga kalagayan, ang aming mga pangailangan, Panginoon. At kailanman hindi kayo nagkulang at nagpabaya sa amin at kailanman hindi nyo kami iiwanan. Bagkos sa inyong oras, Panginoon, ang iyong kalooban will always work out for your glory and for the best for us. And we will come out after our maras, after our trials and tribulations, our problems and difficulties, our maras in life, and be like Job. But he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job 23. And we thank you, Lord, for your work in our lives, past, present, and to the future. We are truly and highly secured in your good hands. Help us to be sensitive to your precious will for our lives. Help us and guide us every day, Lord, and in every decision we make. May you be consulted and may we know that it is your God's will before we go ahead. Help us never to rush ahead of you. We leave the matters into your hands. Guide us safely back to our respective homes. Before I close in prayer, while every head is bowed and every eyes is closed, no one looking around, tell me, my friend, are you still in Egypt? Nasa Egypto ka pa ba na wala kang kasiguruhan ng kaligtasan? Ma ang kalagayan ng iyong buhay, katawan, kaluluwa at espiritu ay nasa panganib ka. At ang impyerno ay nasa dulo ng buhay na walang Kristo at walang kaligtasan. Alalahanin mo yan. At kung ikaw ay anak ng Diyos, lubos bang ating pananalig o pagtitiwala sa Panginoon, lalo na sa ating mga pagsubok, tayo ba ay sa Panginoon sumasandal? And may the Lord strengthen and reinforce our faith life. And as we go home, may God bless you 
and keep you. Before I close in prayer, Pastor, please pray for me. Marami akong pagsubok sa buhay, but God knows I am waiting on Him. And I acknowledge Him as the healer of whatever pains, bitterness, or heartaches that I harbor in my heart, the grudge, the bitterness, the murmurings, the complaints that I have toward God's people, may the Lord forgive me. And may the Lord restore to me that spirit of the Lord as indwelt by the spirit or take over sweet, sweet spirit of God. Our Father, thank you for reminding us that life consists of a lifetime trials, troubles, problems. Because we are still in our imperfe imperfections. We are not yet home in the best home ever which the Lord is preparing. Thank you. He promised he is coming again. May it be sooner than we expect, Lord. But just the same, your time is what counts most to us. Guide us safely back to our respective homes and strengthen our faith in thee. All because of Jesus and for what he has done for us as the reliever, the physician, the healer of all our ills, our bitterness in life. We entrust you, O oh Lord, with the forgiveness and create in us, O oh Lord, a right spirit within us, as David once said. We bless you and thank you and forever grateful that what you had begun in our lives, you will continue and fulfill it until the day of Christ coming for us. In Jesus' name I pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.